Welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into the prehistoric world to uncover the one dinosaur that could make even the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex tremble in fear. You might think T. Rex was the ultimate predator of its time, but there's more to this story. Join us as we explore the fascinating details of this formidable creature, its unique traits, and why it commanded such respect from the king of the dinosaurs. Get ready to travel back millions of years and discover the true terror of the Cretaceous period. Through its appearance and various portrayals in media, the Ankylosaurus has gained significant recognition since its discovery in the early 1900s. A combination of bones, teeth, and osteoderms was unearthed in the renowned Hell Creek Formation of Montana, USA. The holotype is thought to have been an adult, and it astonished paleontologists with its extensive armor, leading its discoverer to name it Ankylosaurus, which means fused lizard. This type specimen was also given the scientific name Magna Ventris, meaning great belly, in reference to its broad midsection, which contributed to its distinctive appearance. Indeed, the Ankylosaurus was quite an extraordinary creature. So distinct and unlike previously discovered dinosaurs, paleontologists decided it was necessary to create an entirely new group for it, which they promptly named after it, the Ankylosa. This group of animals is defined as herbivorous dinosaurs in the clade Aricea, possessing small and large bony shields fused together, completely covering their backs and sides. Within this group, the Ankylosaurus belonged to the Ankylosauridae, whose members were further characterized by massive triangular skulls, short necks, stiff backs, broad bodies, and extensive osteoderms. First of its kind to be discovered, the Ankylosaurus has remained significant due to being the largest known ankylosaur to date. Adult Ankylosaurus individuals measured anywhere from 5.4 meters, 17 feet, to 10 meters, 33 feet in length and stood about 1.7 meters, 5 feet 7 inches, tall at the hips. Additionally, adults could weigh between 5 and 8 tons, making them heavier than the giant triceratops that coexisted with them, and even comparable to the earlier Spinosaurus. This often confuses people, as to the naked eye, both the Triceratops and Spinosaurus appear to be much larger than the Ankylosaurus, why was it so heavy despite not being particularly long or tall? The answer is straightforward. It's extremely robust body. The Ankylosaurus was built like a living tank, with short, broad and compressed bones providing a solid foundation for defense. This defense was significantly enhanced by the presence of bony armor that covered over half of its body. This armor added significant weight to the Ankylosaurus and was composed of knobs and plates of bone known as osteoderms. These bony structures were embedded within its skin, covering its body from snout to tail and varying in size depending on their placement. However, no specimen has been found with its armor intact, leaving paleontologists uncertain about the exact arrangement of the plates. Most agree that the larger plates were likely concentrated in vulnerable areas like the neck, providing maximum protection. Additionally, the total number of osteoderms remains unknown, with estimates ranging from 30 to well over 100. What paleontologists do know is that the Ankylosaurus possessed very unique and specialized armored plates that differed from those seen in other Ankylosaurs. Specifically, its osteoderms were thinner than most and had a hollowed underside. While this might seem less effective compared to solid, thicker armor, it actually benefited the Ankylosaurus by providing greater flexibility and making it more resistant to crushing bites, such as those from a T-Rex. The hollowed construction formed a dome-like shape, which added strength and enabled the Ankylosaurus to withstand higher pressure without the osteoderms shattering. Additionally, the Ankylosaurus had another defensive advantage through collagen fibers that were randomly embedded beneath its armor. These fibers were much thicker than the collagen fibers found in modern armored animals like crocodiles and armadillos. They helped the Ankylosaurus with force distribution, shock absorption, ligament and muscle attachment, as well as growth and repair. Altogether, these fibers combined with its osteoderms made the Ankylosaurus one of the toughest animals in Cretaceous North America. Studies have shown that its armor was strong enough to even withstand small gunfire. In addition to this nearly impenetrable defense, beyond its armor, the Ankylosaurus had another formidable weapon, its legendary tail club. 
Similar to the bony plates comprising its armor, the tail club was made of osteoderms, specifically two large ones, two small osteoderms at the tip, and a row of smaller ones along the midline. Recovered specimens indicate that this club could reach 57 centimeters, 22 5 inches in width, and weighed around 50 pounds, 23 kilograms. This provided substantial weight while remaining light enough for the Ankylosaurus to wield effectively, aided by large tail muscles and stiff tendons, allowing it to swing its tail with tremendous speed and force. Recent studies found that large individuals could generate over 20,000 newtons of force with their tail strikes, more than enough to break bones. Another test showed that the tail could strike with an impulse of up to 4,800 newtons per second. In comparison, a professional baseball player swings at only 13 newtons per second, making the Ankylosaurus's tail strike 370 times more powerful. There has long been debate about who the primary victim of the Ankylosaurus's tail club might have been. Interestingly, no theropod or predator bones have been found with damage clearly linked to club strikes, raising questions about whether the club evolved primarily for defense against predators. Adding to this debate, a smaller ankylosaur named Zool is documented to have used its tail club to strike others of its own genus, likely during fights for social dominance. This has led to the theory that ankylosaur clubs were primarily designed for intraspecies combat. However, many still believe that the ankylosaurus used its club for defense against predators like the T-Rex. Reconstructions show it had a wide striking range for objects behind it, where a T-Rex might first appear during an ambush. Additionally, indirect evidence supports this notion. For example, the closest related group to the Ankylosauria, the Stegosauria, had similar weapons that were used on theropods, as demonstrated by a Stegosaurus that impaled an Allosaurus in a rather unfortunate area. Furthermore, several modern animals use similar structures against predators, despite their primary use being unrelated. Deer antlers, for example, serve various purposes, including defense. All this suggests that the Ankylosaurus could and would use its tail club against attackers if needed. Combined with its size and armor, this made large adults nearly impossible prey for the T-Rex, not to mention other predators such as dromaeosaurs and parasaurs. However, once they reach adulthood, there was a significant shift in behavior. Despite the common belief, Ankylosaurs were likely solitary creatures as adults, relying on their armor and club for self-defense. Without the need to roam in herds, the Ankylosaurus did not play the role of an ecosystem engineer. Unlike the hydrosaurs and living elephants that alter landscapes as they traverse, consuming vegetation, the Ankylosaurus likely did not have the same impact on the environment. However, the Ankylosaurus wasn't a picky eater, despite its size and had quite the appetite. While it preferred greens, its low-slung body and wide muzzle suggest it feasted on abundant ferns and low-growing shrubs of its time. These food sources weren't particularly calorically dense, requiring an adult to consume around 60 kilograms or 130 pounds of food daily, a similar amount to what large elephants eat. This number might have been lower if the Ankylosaurus also consumed fruits or certain invertebrates that were caught in the vegetation. Regardless, it's evident that it had a hefty appetite, necessitating an efficient digestive system to process such copious amounts of food. The method and instrument it employed were its teeth. Its teeth were cusp-shaped and featured intriguing projections that assisted in slicing plant material into small pieces. Additionally, it possessed a narrow beak that efficiently removed leaves from plants. Once inside its body, the Ankylosaurus had another distinctive trait that facilitated digestion. The system, which is thought to have functioned through hindgut fermentation, used the help of symbiotic bacteria to break down food. This method is observed in many large herbivorous animals today, such as the rhino. Such fermentation necessitates large vats, so to speak, which typically manifest as expanded abdomens. Therefore, the wide midsection of the Ankylosaurus is believed to have served as its fermentation chamber. This digestion strategy may have provided it with an advantage over other herbivores, further aided by its sense of smell. The configuration of its nasal passages and the considerable size of its olfactory bulb indicate that it possessed an outstanding sense of smell, 
allowing the Ankylosaurus to determine if food was spoiled, ripe or concealed under a dense layer of vegetation. Additionally, its sense of smell was probably its primary means of detecting nearby predators. Although it had stereoscopic vision, its eyesight was not particularly sharp, and another domain in which Ankylosaurus, its speed was not the most refined, as its large size probably made it slow moving, likely no faster than a walking human, with quick bursts possible only in urgent situations. However, due to its extensive defenses, the Ankylosaurus did not need to be fast to be successful and widespread. Discoveries reveal that it inhabited northwestern America and Alberta, Canada. Within these regions, it favored forested floodplains with relatively subtropical climates. These areas were teeming with life, such as the renowned Hell Creek Formation. Ankylosaurus coexisted with many well-known dinosaurs, including T. rex, Denvosaurus, Dracorex, Pachycephalosaurus, Platyosaurus, Spherotholus, Stegosaurus, Taurosaurus, Triceratops, Leptoceratops, Centrosaurus, Edmontosaurus, Thessalosaurus, Ornithomimus, Triceratops, Nanotyrannus, Struthiomimus, Anzu, Acheroraptor, Avasaurus, and Dakotaraptor. Besides dinosaurs, the region also hosted non-dinosaurian life such as insects, mollusks, frogs, salamanders, bony fish, cartilaginous fish, various pterosaurs, turtles, lizards, snakes, champsosaurus, crocodilomorphs like Borealosuchus and Brachychampsa. This diversity was facilitated by the presence of extensive river systems that supported a variety of angiosperms, conifers, ferns, mosses, shrubs and vines. Studies of the sediment formations also reveal that monsoons, tropical storms, and occasional forest fires kept the ecosystem dynamic. For the Ankylosaurus, the richness of these environments enabled it to thrive from 68 to 66 million years ago. Although, paleontologists have observed that it wasn't the most abundant animal in the area, with Ankylosaurus fossils comprising only 1% of finds in the Hell Creek Formation. This suggests it likely didn't produce many offspring, and further implies that it was not a social creature. Its lower population numbers may, its limited population may have also played a minor role in its extinction during the KT extinction event. Additionally, its slow-moving nature could have hastened its demise, especially as its habitat was vulnerable to rapidly spreading fires triggered by the asteroid impact. Ultimately, it was this catastrophic event that brought an end to this formidable dinosaur. However, the extinction of the Ankylosaurus and other non-avian dinosaurs did not mark the end of giant reptiles. New reptilian families emerged after the KT extinction event, leading to the rise of a lineage that would become truly colossal, the largest family of reptiles since the dinosaurs. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.